Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. And thanks for attending this session about Aurelia, Musician, and the wonderful Music First Classroom. I'm Peter Lee, and I'm one of the original authors and developers of Aurelia. By the end of this session, you'll understand what Aurelia and Musician are, their integration with Music First, how they easily support remote learning and save valuable teaching time, and be introduced to the comprehensive musical content they offer your student. Aurelia and Musician are software titles that cover ear training and theory. Students can use them on nearly any device, phones, tablets, Chromebooks, and of course, Windows and Mac computers. Let's launch them now. I'm logging in to my Music First classroom. Using the software button, I can easily open Musician. And now we're at the Musician practice page. We have some really simple content for younger students, things such as note reading, enharmonic notes, key signatures and chords, and also more advanced things such as cadences and chord progressions. Switching over to Aurelia, you can see we have things such as interval recognition, scales and tonality, even tuning. And again here, we have chord progressions. Now the difference here is that in Aurelia, students will listen to a chord progression, whereas in Musician, they will look at a chord progression and have to identify the chords. The software is really comprehensive. There really is something for everyone. Uh, you can see here we have all of these very topic groups across both of the titles and all of the content is organised into different syllabuses. For Music First and the Classroom we have the Introductory, the Beginner and the Intermediate Syllabus as well. All of this content is nicely integrated into the Music First Classroom and people use the software daily for student practice, quizzes, and of course, worksheets and assessments. One of the most common things that students use Aurelia and Musician for is practice. Intervals, chords, rhythm, dictation, it's all covered with instant feedback and automatic assessment. Let's take a look. The first topic we'll look at is very simple, Musician Note Reading. Remember, Musician is our theory program. The focus is on reading and writing notes on the score. We're not going to hear much as we're doing these questions. We'll just go to level one. The first question here is multiple choice. In Musician, there's a nice mix of multiple choice as well as notation entry. What note is this? It's an E. We have an A. And this time we have to enter an A on a line or a space. Now we'll just enter a G here and submit our answer. And you can see we get some nice feedback. The correct note was A and our note was G. Let's now move on to intervals. You can see here that we're using the music first syllabi. I'm gonna just change now to the beginner syllabus and choose intervals. And you can see there's a few extra topics that have just appeared on our screen. But let's jump into intervals. And we now have three levels available, okay? Each topic has a carefully designed sequence of levels for students to work through. Let's just go to level one. Okay, first of all, we have to enter a perfect fifth ascending, which we can do and submit our answer. Now, let's get a question wrong. Uh, this time we have to enter a perfect octave. Let's do something that's not quite an octave. We get a chance to try again, we won't. And then again, we get some nice feedback, okay? So in this case, both intervals are shown. I can see my octave and also the perfect fourth that I entered. Now, although we're in Musician, our theory program, I can hear the two intervals just by touching or clicking on the notation.
and we'll just go and look at another topic now. Okay, Musician Rhythm Tapping is a nice interactive exercise. Let's just go into level one. We hear a click track, simple rhythm in 2-4. Now you would have heard there that I didn't tap that quite correctly and I get some nice feedback. So the thing that I did wrong there is I missed this note here in the second measure, okay? And you can see I get a little red line there indicating that. So my score is adjusted appropriately. I got nine out of 10 there for 90%. And so as I do these questions, all of my scores are recorded for later review. Let's just take a quick look at the cadences topic in Musician. We'll just go to level one. And now we look at our cadence and have to identify it. Obviously that's not correct. It's an authentic cadence and again I get some nice feedback there. So that's a very quick look at just a few of the musician topics. Remember there are many many more. The first edition has around 25 topics and the full edition which is great for AP Music Theory, has around 50 topics in total. And now we'll move to Aurelia, where we'll be listening to musical examples. Firstly, let's look at interval recognition, a very, very popular topic. I'm just going to stay on the beginner syllabus for now. And we'll jump into level one. Okay, identify the interval and submit our answer. And we got that one correct. Now let's call that octave a perfect fifth. Obviously not right. And again, we get some nice feedback. Now very importantly here, we can play back our question and answer as well. Okay, and we can do that comparison for each of the questions. Let's go to now chord recognition. Now, I'll stay on the uh, beginner syllabus and I'll just jump into level one again. And I can hear the chord. Now, just for this drill, I'm gonna pretend that I'm on my iPhone or Android phone, okay? So I'll do this just by shrinking the browser right down. And you'll see that the software is responsive, okay? So it's really laid out the screen nicely. So, you know, my point here is that students can use this on their phones just fine. Now let's go and uh, enter our answer. I think that was a minor chord. Not quite, we won't try again. And then we get some nice feedback. And you can see that everything has laid itself out nicely uh, as if I was using it on my small phone. We can now make this bigger again and it will look much, much nicer. Okay, let's now look at meter recognition. Open it up and hit start. Okay, we'll select an answer, hit submit, and we got it correct, and we could play the question back again there. Now, just one thing to point out, in that question, we weren't listening to MIDI, we were listening to real audio recordings, uh, which makes things much nicer for your students. So we have a mix there of you know piano pieces, orchestral works, um, all sorts of instruments, etc., etc. All right, one of my favorite Aurelia topics is tuning. We'll stay on the beginner syllabus, and we'll just go to level one. Now, everyone get ready. Okay, so no prizes for this one. Is the second note sharp or flat? I would say that it was flat. And I got it correct, which is lovely. Now, let's just go up a few levels of tuning. So I'm just going to use the uh, intermediate syllabus and go back to tuning. 
And now I will go to say level three. Okay, so this is a little more challenging. This time we have to tune the intervals. Now we can replay the question again. And we have to sharpen that second note a little bit. So we can just drag our little slider, hit play my answer. Now I don't think I'm gonna get this correct, but we'll see how we go. Uh, not quite and I made it too sharp, so my bad there. Uh, just so you know, some of these things can be customized if necessary uh, to suit you know, your student needs. All right, so that's lots of fun and a great exercise for our diagnostics for your students. And the last topic we'll look at is melodic dictation. And we'll submit our answer. Obviously that's not correct. And I get some nice feedback here with the incorrect notes highlighted in red. Okay, so the first edition of Aurelia has more than 20 topics. And the full edition, like Musician, has around 50 topics in total. I have mentioned the first edition a few times now. So let me just briefly explain what I mean. I'll bring up a slide to assist. Our first edition has been specially designed for Music First, and it's a very, very cost-effective way to use Aurelian Musician in your elementary and high schools with lots of students. What we call the full version, which has all the content and customization, that's used for AP Music Theory and college level. However, it's not uncommon for schools to use a mix of both first and full with their students. We've just spent some time using Aurelia and Musician to practice, as a student. Students can work independently, at their own pace. Now, all their progress and amount of time spent is recorded, and as a teacher, it's very simple to pull up a report showing these details. I'm going to log into my classroom again, as a teacher this time. And I'll open up uh, Aurelia from the software button. And this time I'm going to launch the Mac software itself. And now we're in. Now I'm just gonna go over to the reports button and I'm gonna look at an overall summary report for the student who I was logged in as before, which was this bill person here. Now I'm just gonna see what they've been doing for the last 14 days. So here we can see that uh, Bill has done some meter recognition, spent about one minute there, some intervals, some tuning, some chord recognition, and some melodic dictation. And we can see all of their scores here on this very, very simple report. And you can run these for entire classes, or for individual students. So the idea of student practice is wonderful. They are self-directed, you can track and see what they've been doing and see their scores. However, there are other things that are even more useful when using uh, Aurelian Musician with the classroom, and they are tasks. Many teachers use Musician and Aurelia every week for automatically graded quizzes, worksheets, and assessments using our test feature. Now, tests are simply sequences of questions from any topic and any level. We include lots of these for you in the software for the first syllabus and also for AP Music Theory. They can be customized if required. And really importantly, the results from any test that a student does flow straight back into your classroom gradebook. So it saves you lots and lots of time. Back in my Music First classroom, I'm still logged in as a teacher. So I'm just going to log out and log in again as a student.
I'm going to go to my orchestra class. And here we'll see that my teacher has already assigned some tasks for me. So let's go ahead and take our intervals task right now. Open it up. And here we go directly into the task. So the other nice thing The other nice thing about doing a task is that the student doesn't have to make any decisions. They see the link in the classroom, they hit the link and it opens directly into that task in Aurelia or Musician. Now let's just listen to that interval again. Now we've got a unison interval there so we can select this. Very good. Another nice fifth. Another unison. We'll call that a fifth just for fun. And one more. And then we're done. The task is complete. Now I made a very short task there, just five questions in intervals, but I could I could do something more complex, but we'll save that for a little bit later. Let's just log out and we'll go back to the classroom. Now, I'm just going to now uh, log out as a student and log back in as my teacher. And we'll have a look in our grade book. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to my orchestra class. And we can see here in the recent activity that uh, Bill has submitted the quiz one intervals, which is very nice. We can also see that yesterday, Ruth and Bob submitted quiz one intervals. I can now go to the grade book. And we can see Bill's score there. Okay, so Bill got 80%. So not too bad, well done, Bill. <laughs> Now, the thing I like about this is that, you know, as a teacher, you can set these tasks and all the results flow back into your gradebook automatically. So it's a really, really, really big time saver for you. So, tests allow you to present students with a sequence of automatically graded questions with results flowing straight back into your Music First classroom. This is a huge time saver. Many of our most successful teachers assign their students one or more tasks each week remembering that they can do these on their phones if necessary. And just a little tip, students respond very well to short tasks. I wouldn't recommend setting your students a 60 minute theory quiz every week. It really will not work. When I showed the test feature, I used one of our many included quizzes, but you can definitely customize and create your own. Let's give it a go now. I'm still logged into the classroom as a teacher. So I'll open my orchestra class and I'm gonna create a new task. Firstly, I'll give it a title. And this will use some Music First software. And I'm gonna use Musician for this task. I can then set a due date and we'll give our students until August the 7th. I'll add this to my grade book. It will be worth a maximum of 50 points. And the assessment group I've set up will be the end of semester. And our task in the classroom is now created. The next thing to do is to open Musician, the Windows or Mac software, and actually create the worksheet itself. So we simply hit the Open in Musician link, and the software will open up automatically. We'll all be logged in and ready to create our test.
Okay, and here we are. So, when we create a test, it's very simple. I just hit the plus button here to create a new test. I will call this my end of semester one theory worksheet, and I'll give it a description, something that my students can see. Uh, I'll tell them that there's going to be some note reading, advanced, some inharmonic notes, some complete the bar exercises, and lastly, some chord progressions. And the next step is to simply add some content to my test. So I hit the Entries button. And now I'm free to add my entries. Now a test can have as many entries and questions as you wish. There's no limit. Uh, we're going to keep this you know, reasonably short today so that it uh, doesn't take too long to actually take this uh, test. So we'll hit new entry. And my first uh, entry will have two questions. We're going to use the Music First Intermediate Syllabus and we are going to choose some advanced note reading okay, uh, from level two there. Now these questions are worth one mark each, okay? They're fairly simple. The next entry will be uh, in harmonic notes. So I can choose this here and we will just stay on level one, but I'm gonna make these worth a little bit more. They're gonna be worth two points each. So you can see here we can weight our entries and assign different numbers of marks for different types of content. The next entry uh, I said would be complete the bar. Now I'm going to actually go back to the beginner syllabus here, make it a little bit easier for my students and choose complete the bar and they can just do level one. Okay. Uh, you'll notice I have quavers turned on here. Uh, my apologies for all of my North American friends. Uh, I do know about quarter notes, uh, but my computer is set up for UK terminology. Rest assured, you can have both sets of terminology or just uh, quarter notes and eighth notes if you wish. It's completely up to you. Okay, now we'll just do one uh, complete the bar question from level one. Uh, we're going to make this worth 10 points though. Okay, that's going to be worth a little bit more. And then my last uh, entry in my uh, little quiz, I'm gonna go back to the intermediate syllabus and I'm gonna choose chord progressions. We'll just stay on level one and we're just gonna ask one question and this, this can also be worth uh, 10 marks, okay? So uh, in you know probably just a couple of minutes, I've created a nice little theory worksheet. Uh, it's very short, I've made it short on purpose, it only has, you can see here, five questions in total uh, and there's 24 marks allocated within Musician for this. If you remember in the classroom I added, I said it was worth 50 marks and that score will simply, you know, uh, translate across pro rata when we transfer that back to the classroom once our students have uh, attempted the task. Alright, now that's basically it, it is all done. So we can just close that window. and that is now set up. So there are lots of options for our uh, tests. I'm only gonna look at three of these today. Uh, first of all, time limit. Would you like to set a time limit for your students? Now, honestly, most of the time you don't need to do this, but if you wish to, you can. You know, you can give them 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever is appropriate for the task. Uh, the next option that's important is can the test be resumed? Now, we normally have this turned on unless it's a, a real exam or you know high stakes assessment, because uh, it's very useful. If the student is working at home, as they probably are at the moment, and they need to go off you know, to um, you know, have their dinner, then it's very useful if they can close their laptop, come back and resume their task later on. And the other option is very important, is this one here, the results. Show feedback after each question. If you remember earlier, when we were practicing, after each question we were told if we were right or wrong. And I think that is a, a wonderful part of the software. Uh, when you're doing a worksheet, I think that's also quite valid to have the feedback turned on. But if it's a true assessment task, you may not wish your students to be told anything as they're working through their uh, quiz or assessment or exam or whatever it may be. So it's very easy to turn off the feedback and also turn off the score 
that they see whilst they're doing the test, okay? So a few things there for you to think about uh, that really change the, the type of activity that you're gonna set for your students. Now, the very last thing to do before we exit Musician is we need to attach this. So we've launched Musician after we created the task in the classroom. And like all the other tools, we just need to attach this to our uh, Music First Classroom task, okay? And I hit the attach button. Am I sure I wish to attach it? Yes, I am. And that is now done. And you can see there over in the list, it now shows up as attached, okay? And it even gets highlighted red for us. So that is it. Our task has now been created and attached and we can now return to the classroom. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to log out and I'm going to log in again as a student now, okay? And we'll see how that has uh, appeared. So I'll log in as uh, Bill again. Uh, Bill's in choir and orchestra, but we're working in the orchestra class today, so I'll open up orchestra. And we can see here we have our end of semester worksheet all ready for us. It's got our due date that we set up before of August the 7th at 11.59 p.m. And we can go ahead and take this right now. So let's do this again just for fun. We'll open it up. Open in Musician. Now you'll see here this is automatically opening up in the browser for me. So I could be doing this on my phone or iPad or Android phone or something like that if I wished. Uh, hit the start button and I'm off and running. Okay, now remember we chose advanced note reading, so we're getting some slightly more interesting content here. So firstly, enter an A flat on a line or a space. Okay, so I'm gonna select flat, and then I will go and enter an A flat. Submit my answer. If you remember, we left the feedback turned on, so we're gonna to get told if we're right or wrong. Enter a B sharp on a line or a space. Okay, let's see how we go here. There we go. Doing well so far. And now we're up to N harmonic notes. So enter the N harmonic equivalent of an A sharp. Let's choose a B flat. And submit our answer. There we go. And now we have complete the bar. Okay, so complete the bar with this rhythmic value, a quarter note. There we go, submit, and we're off. And lastly, our chord progressions question. So into the chord symbols, we are in major. Okay, so we're in F major, we have a one chord. Uh, let's just choose a five seven for fun. And then we'll go back to a one chord and hit submit. And we got it correct, which is wonderful. Now we can now hear this back if we wish. And that is lovely. Hit the next button and we are done. And we now log out and we're back to the classroom. Okay, so let's just go back and we'll log out again. And we will log in as a teacher see Bill's result. All right, so over to orchestra again. And here we go. We can see that Bill submitted the end of semester worksheet just a few seconds ago. Uh, we can now go to our grade book. And we can see here that Bill has done very well he got 100% for this task, okay? Now, unfortunately, you know, uh, the grade book also reveals some uh, unfortunate things. Bob, Ruth, Tim Solly, and Tim W, they have not completed many tasks at all, so we'll have to chase them up at a later time. Okay, so look, I hope that makes sense. Uh, what we did then, as opposed to using one of the built-in tests, we actually created our own test. We linked it to a task in the Music First classroom, and then, you know, Big time saver, our result has flowed straight back into the grade book for us. We still have a little time. So before we finish, here's a quick look at some other topics in Musician and Aurelia.
just launching Musician, opening the browser, and here we go. Now we'll use the beginner syllabus right now, okay? And we'll start by looking at rhythmic subdivision, a great topic for younger students. So we have questions such as these. How many eighth notes would it take to equal this rhythmic value? And the answer here will be two. How many eighth rests would it take to equal this rhythmic value? And the answer would be one. Okay, back out to our practice area, and then let's have a little look at instrument recognition. Now this is one of the few topics in Musician that actually plays you something. And what it does is it plays you nice audio recordings of all of the instruments that we know and love. So what instrument was that? That was a piano. And we have a bass drum. Lastly, a guitar. And some nice feedback for our students there. As well. Okay, back out to the practice screen again. Let's take a look at the piano keyboard. Three levels here. Uh, we'll just stick on level one for now. And here we have to identify the note name, and that is an F. Okay, key signatures is a topic that many people uh, like to use. Go to level two. So here we have a mix of multiple choice and also entry questions. So which key has this key signature? B flat major, correct. We have these type of questions. So what is the relative major of D minor? That would be F major. Relative major of A minor. And here we have to enter the key signature of G minor. So we're gonna put in, let's just put in one flat here. Submit our answer, that's obviously not right. And then again, we get some nice feedback, okay? So we get shown the key signature of G minor, and then because we actually put in a valid key signature, it tells us that uh, we actually match the key signature of D minor there. Okay, and back out to the practice screen again. All right, uh, let's take a quick look at symbols. Go to level three. And here we have questions such as these. So define this symbol. Correct, a breath mark. Define this symbol, a crescendo, etc., etc. So the symbols topic deals with all those performance directions and things and, and markings that you might find uh, on a typical score. Now, one thing I haven't shown you yet is uh, some of the lessons in Aurelian musicians. So imagine that you are a, um, a student who really hasn't practiced intervals very much at all. When you enter the topic, you can simply hit the take lesson button. And then there are literally hundreds and hundreds of pages of information and notation examples that students can look at and also play back. So I can now switch page and I could look at, for example, uh, a page all about perfect fourths. Okay, we have some songs that uh, begin with the perfect fourth. We can play back these uh, notation examples here. Etc. Etc. Now, these lesson screens exist for really every topic. So if I go over to chords, 
and I'd like to take a lesson, I can also do that. I can go and learn about major chords and minor chords, etc., etc. And these, you know, these um, are very comprehensive, lots and lots of content in there, reference screens, etc. But it's very nice for students to be able to play back the audio examples, uh, even in Musician here. Okay, so let's just jump out of Musician and uh, we'll go over to Aurelia and look at some of the extra topics in here. First of all, we'll look at tonality and we'll just jump into level uh, two here. Okay, so some slightly more advanced content. Uh, now you would have heard that's a real audio recording as well. We're not playing using MIDI instruments. We can replay this at any stage if we like, um, but we'll just have a stab at this now and we'll say that's a minor pentatonic example. Hit submit and we got it correct. Now really nice feedback here. The student can then see the melody. Uh, they can play the question back if they like as well. So a nice little topic there for your students. Uh, we'll look now at uh, the uh, tempo topic, if I can just find it. We'll go to the beginner syllabus and we'll just jump into tempo and we'll hit start here. So which best describes the tempo of the played extract? Now we'll just replay that. And I would say that that's getting slower. All right, we'll just do one more. All right, we might say that one was getting faster. Submit our answer, and yes, we got that one correct as well. All right, so back out to the practice screen. Uh, let's now just have a look at a, a topic that everyone knows and loves, rhythmic dictation. Uh, now we're in the beginner level here, or the beginner syllabus, so this is gonna be super, super easy. And we'll just go to uh, level one. Okay, so we enter our answer, submit. We obviously didn't get that quite right. And then we can see the correct answer and our answer as well, okay? So again, some really nice feedback for our students there. Now I could have replayed that, you know, and tried a little harder, but uh, I did want to show you the, the uh, nice feedback that students get as well. All right, so back out to the practice area again. Let's just have a look at dynamics. So that was getting softer. Do another question. And that is nice and soft. And submit. Back out to the practice area and let's look at something slightly more advanced. So let's go over to chord progressions and we will go to, uh, let's go to say level three here, hit start, and off we go. OK, 
Okay, now you can see here we've been given the first chord. We can replay this because we're in practice and we can also adjust the tempo again because we're in practice mode. Now I'll just put in some chords. Okay, so let's put in, we'll say that was a, a one chord again and this one was a one chord and then we'll have a five chord and then we'll go back to one. Okay, now I can modify any of these if I need to, uh, but that's all fine for now. Submit my answer. Clearly not right. I won't try again. And again, some nice feedback. Okay, so um, here I put in a one chord instead of the five chord. I can see all the notation and I can also play this back if I wish. Okay, now these get uh, much harder, obviously. Uh, I'm just in the beginner syllabus here, so chord progressions is very, very simple. Um, but they will get a lot harder as you work through the levels and also into the intermediate syllabus as well. Now, um, I did show you the uh, lesson screens in um, Musician. Uh, there are also lesson screens in Aurelia. So if I go into Cadences, I can take a lesson and I can see lots and lots of, you know, different pages of information about all of the different cadences, uh, etc. and playback examples. So that sort of content is also in there. Okay, that brings us to the end of our Aurelia and Musician session. Thanks so much for attending, enjoy the rest of the conference and please stay well. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to get in touch. Thanks again.